Hi everyone and welcome to this video. This is a Math OED2 video, Chapter 6, Section 1, or if you're in Statistics, this is Chapter 1. In this video, we're going to discuss resistant versus non-resistant measures of center. Now, sometime in your life before, you've probably been exposed to this concept of median and mean. Both median and mean um, can be called averages, and they can both be explained as ways to measure the center of a set of data. So when we use the term resistant measures of center um, versus non-resistant, what we're really trying to find out is what measures of center are sensitive to the presence of outliers? Or in other words, which measures of center will change drastically in the presence of one or more outlier? Okay, and these ones, uh, these types of measures, things that are sensitive or things that will change drastically are called non-resistant measures. And when we get to um, measures of spread, we'll find that we have the same aspect, where we have some resistant measures of spread and some non-resistant measures of spread. So let's get started. I made up a totally random um, data set. So let's just imagine that these are the ages of some friends that we have on Facebook. Okay, so this, this is a sample, and if we count them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten data points, and notice I've already organized them from least to greatest. So let's start looking at the mean. So remember, to calculate the mean, what we have to do is we have to first go through and sum all of the values. And you can see I've already done that for us here. I used an Excel spreadsheet and I found the sum of 171. And then once we sum them, we can just divide that by the number of data points, which is 10. So that's about 17.1. So what does that mean? That means that our the average age um, in this sample of 10 friends is about 17 years of age, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this data set. We're gonna go in and we're going to delete this 10th data point, which says 22, and we're going to make it an outlier. In other words, a value that is very, very far away from the rest of the values. And in this case, I made the value to be 90 because I wanted it to be an extreme value. So if you want to use your imagination, you can pretend this is like your grandma or you know some <laughs> older relative joined Facebook and friended you. And so now you have this friend who's very far above you in age. So again, in order to calculate the mean of the set of data, we have to sum all of those numbers. And I quickly used technology, I used an Excel spreadsheet to find the sum of 2,239. And the very simple reason that I didn't add 90 as an 11th data point, which I could absolutely have done, was just to keep the data size at 10 so that when I divide it, it's really easy. So this is, I'm gonna round up. Okay, so this is about 24 years. And let's go over here and round this to a whole number of years. And we'll say that this is 17 years. Okay, so you can see that the average age here has changed from 17 to 24 years. Okay, so let's kind of keep that in our mind as we move forward and explore what happens to our median age um, when we have or don't have an outlier, okay? So here I have this nice little chart for us. So 
again, without the outlier, we said that the, the mean age of our friend group is 17 years. When we add in that outlier, it becomes about 24 years old. So now we have to remind ourselves, okay, great. Well, how do we find the median? Well, if you have a median without the outlier or with an outlier, right? We're, we're trying to find the middle. Remember, median means middle, like the median in, in the middle of a road, okay? So the easiest way, as you know, to find the median is simply to cross out numbers till you get to the middle. And when there's two middle numbers, you just ask yourself, well, what's halfway in between that? So it's about 18 and a half years, okay? So what if, again, I were to cross this data point out and make it a 90, what would the median number be? Well, again, right, the middle number hasn't changed, has it? It's still exactly in the middle, 18.5. And let's just explore this idea of if I added a data point, if I created an 11th data point. So let's say my 11th data point was 90. How would that change? Well, again, we would go through and we would cross out numbers till we get to the middle number. Okay, and hopefully this time you can see that, that our middle value would be 19. Okay. So because our median value either doesn't change or changes very slightly when we add an outlier, okay, we see that the median is a resistant measure of center. That's a C, sorry, not an S. Okay, so again, it's a resistant measure of center because it is not sensitive to outliers. Okay, and when we talk about the mean, okay, this is a non-resistant measure of center. And the reason is because it is sensitive um, to outliers. Okay, so again, when you have one or more outliers in your set of data, um, a better measure of center would be the median. Okay, this is also true if you have um, asymmetric data. which is usually the case when you have outliers um, or if you have a skewed data distribution, you wanna use the median, okay? If you are fortunate enough to have a symmetric distribution and you don't have any outliers, okay, then the mean is a good measure of center.